Hello and welcome to the second DevOps tool of the month video with Loft and the exciting topic of self-service virtual clusters for developers. First, I will explain what problem Loft solves, how it works, and then we will see it in action with a simple demo. Let's say in your company, there are 10 project teams all using Kubernetes and each team would need three clusters for development, staging and production. Now, as you might think, each team creating and managing their own Kubernetes cluster is very inefficient, especially because administration of Kubernetes cluster is a lot of effort and you don't want to do it 30 times in a company because you have 10 Kubernetes projects. But it's also expensive because you need more servers for all those master nodes, so you need more resources. And a common approach of companies to solve this is to create a company-wide Kubernetes cluster and a dedicated team managing this company-wide Kubernetes cluster. So now your company would only need to administer this one shared cluster and they can now give developers access to the shared cluster using isolation with namespaces. So each team can deploy their applications. However, this comes with following challenges. First of all, how do you give different teams and individual developers access to this shared cluster? Or how do you restrict this access? How do you make sure each team only gets access to their project resources to keep the cluster secure or even restrict the access within the team to define who has access to what based on their role and tasks in the team. Also, how do you restrict how much cluster resources each team can use? Because you don't want one team using up most of the cluster resources. And finally, how do you isolate the resources and applications of each project from each other? Because obviously you don't want the project resources to be accidentally mixed up. And all this is especially important in development environments where things will be tested and tried out, but also in production environment where everything has to run smoothly. And Loft helps solve exactly those challenges using a concept of virtual clusters. So what is a virtual cluster? It's simply a cluster inside a cluster. And the way Loft implements virtual clusters is when user creates a virtual cluster in this shared company-wide Kubernetes cluster, Loft creates a new namespace and deploys a lightweight Kubernetes cluster based on K3S inside that new namespace. So basically this lightweight virtual cluster has its own API server and controller, which are two of the master processes. And this way, virtual clusters will be completely isolated from each other. So now one developer can create a virtual cluster to test a new feature, for example. And even if he blows up and messes up his virtual cluster, nothing else gets affected. Maybe a product manager wants to demo a new feature to the potential application users so they can very easily spin up a virtual cluster to deploy the application and then just remove that virtual cluster when the demo is over. So now let's see the complete flow to how you as a user can set it up and use it. Usually you already have existing Kubernetes clusters in your company, which may have been created using EKS or OpenShift or Rancher, and you already have ingress controller monitoring and some cluster-wide resources already configured. Now Loft comes into the picture and usually DevOps engineers will install Loft in one of the clusters and then start connecting all the other clusters to it. Basically creating one big self-service cluster for the whole company. So now using Loft UI or Loft command line interface or even kubectl, cluster admins can create users for the teams or individual developers and give them permissions and access to create and use virtual clusters. After that, developers of different teams can basically start creating virtual clusters themselves and deploying applications inside. So as you see, Loft solves 
quite a lot of challenges for managing and also using Kubernetes clusters within the company. And to see that, let's jump right into a demo where we can see all of this in action. It's actually very easy to get started with Loft. And for the demo, I'm gonna use my local Minikube cluster to install Loft and then basically see some of its features. So my cluster is already running and it is basically empty because I have no resources inside. And the first step will be to install Loft CLI. And on the Loft documentation page, basically you see the installation command for each operating system. I'm just gonna copy this, very simple, execute, and Loft is installed locally. Now, as a next step, we want to install Loft in our Minikube cluster. So basically Loft has to start somewhere, right? It has to be installed somewhere and that is inside a Kubernetes cluster. And we can do that very easily using Loft start command. And let's execute and see what happens. First of all, Loft detected that I have a Minikube cluster running. So it is asking me whether I want to use that. Let's do yes. Email address, I'm just gonna tap in this. And now, as you see, Loft is getting installed inside our Minikube cluster using this command right here. And as you see, the installation was successful and we have a Loft UI URL that was exposed automatically at this address and we have username and password. So let's go back to the browser and let's open Loft UI. And we're gonna log in with this admin user. And this is a Loft UI. And obviously in your real projects at work, you would install Loft in an existing remote Kubernetes cluster. It could be a cloud Kubernetes cluster or on premise. And the admin user will basically have the whole management permissions for all the clusters that Loft is basically managing, right? And the admin user also has this configuration tab here for administering all those clusters. So usually it will work like this. You as an admin user, if you're a DevOps engineer, for example, you will basically connect all the clusters that your company has to this Loft management cluster, right? So basically one cluster that you install the Loft in automatically gets connected and that's why we see this Loft cluster right here. This is actually our Minikube cluster in which we installed Loft. So as a second step, as the administrator of the clusters, you will connect an additional cluster using Loft. In my case, I have created a Linode Kubernetes cluster because it's just very easy to get started with. And I'm gonna connect LKE cluster in Loft. And this is my Linode cluster, very simple. I just have one node and here is my kube config for connecting to the cluster. So let's go back and see how easy it is to connect existing Kubernetes clusters to Loft. And note that this could be any Kubernetes cluster, it doesn't really matter. It will work for all the same. Connect cluster, let's call it LKE cluster. Now as a next step, we basically just need to provide a kube config for the cluster. I am simply just gonna copy that from here and paste it in, connect. And now you see as a next step, kiosk is being installed in this remote Linode cluster. So I don't have to do anything as an admin, basically Loft takes care of it. Kiosk is basically an open source project that Loft uses to manage those remote clusters that are connected to Loft and that got installed and we have a new cluster connected that we can now use. And if I click finish, I am inside this LKE cluster that we just added and you see that Kiosk was installed and Loft also gives you very handy way of installing any additional Helm charts basically in that remote cluster if you don't already have them like Nginx, Ingress, Cert Manager, Prometheus, etc. 
So you could actually install all those things in the remote clusters using Loft very easily. So I'm going to go back to the clusters. So this is our LKE. This is our Minikube clusters. So we are all set up to use them. Now, who would use those clusters? These are going to be developers, maybe DevOps engineers or other team members, right? People who actually want to deploy applications or test out different stuff in those clusters and create virtual clusters, basically, right? So that means that I, as an admin, should give people permission to create and use those virtual clusters. So in user section, basically, I can add new users. And let's say this is a new user. Let's call her Nicole. Provide email address. And as an admin user, obviously, you can limit permissions and access to that user, right? So you can basically decide which clusters they have access to and how much resources they can actually use and so on. So in our case, we're going to use all the defaults basically that Loft provides. So this will be a user that doesn't have admin privileges, but can use basically all the clusters that are connected. So we're going to leave everything as is and create that user. And we get a link that I could as an admin, send that user and say, hey, you can log in with this URL so that they can start basically using this self-managed cluster. So now that my job as an admin is done here, I can log out and open that URL for the new user. There you go. And now I'm logging in as this developer called Nicole that basically has permission to create virtual clusters and start deploying her applications inside. So I am a developer, I'm a backend engineer. And this is my account. I don't see an admin tab here because it's not an admin user. And if we go to clusters, we basically see both of these host clusters, right? The actual clusters that were connected here. And right here, I'm able to create virtual clusters. Let's actually do that, create virtual cluster. And here I can select which cluster, which host cluster I should create the virtual cluster in. Let's actually choose LKE. And let's say I want to create this cluster to test my new feature payment. So I'm going to call this cluster payment test. Again, I'm going to leave all the defaults because we're doing a simple demo and create that virtual cluster. And soon enough, our virtual cluster is up and running. And we actually created two things now. One is space. So space basically creates a namespace inside that LKE cluster, the cluster payment test. So if I actually connect to my LK cluster and let's do kubectl get namespace, right here I have this V cluster payment test, right? So this namespace got created inside the LKE cluster and inside the namespace, a new virtual cluster got created. Now, again, I want to use this cluster to deploy my applications. So how do I connect to the virtual cluster instead of the host cluster, right? Because now I'm connected to LKE. And if I do kubectl, apply, basically, I will be creating stuff inside here. But I want to connect to and use the virtual cluster inside that namespace. Let's actually see the pods that are running inside the namespace. And here you see we have two pods running. And these two pods are basically part of the virtual cluster, right? As I mentioned previously, it's a lightweight K3S cluster that has its own API server that we can actually talk to. So now how do we configure our cube context to talk to that virtual cluster instead of the host cluster? In order to connect to this virtual cluster, we can actually click on this button here, connect, and we will see loft command that will configure our local cube context to point to that virtual cluster. So the way it works is that any user who has access to this virtual cluster and who has permission to use it can log in to Loft using Loft CLI. 
to this address. In our case, we're logging in as user Nicole because that's the developer who created the virtual cluster and provide the access key of that user. So in profile, access key, I can create my access key and use it to log in to Loft. And let's add an insecure flag here because it's complaining that we're logging into insecure instance. And there you go. And now, because locally I'm authenticated with Loft, I can actually execute this connect command because now Loft knows that I, as this user, have a permission to use that virtual cluster. So let's execute. And there you go. Cube context changed. So now let's do kubectl get namespace, first of all. And we're seeing the namespaces of the virtual cluster. And in addition, we can do cluster info as well. And here you see Kubernetes master is pointing to API server of our virtual cluster, vCluster payment test. So this is the endpoint of the API server. And here, as you see, we have some of the master processes running as well. So now this developer, backend engineer, user can basically do anything in the virtual cluster without affecting anybody else within the resource limits and permission limits that this user was given by admin of the Loft cluster. And last but not least, a very important feature of Loft is a sleep mode, which lets you save significantly on your infrastructure costs. So when I'm done using the cluster or when I'm done testing basically and I don't need it for some time, you can either manually trigger a sleep mode for a space. So basically the virtual cluster in that namespace will scale down all the resources so nothing will run anymore. However, data and all the Kubernetes components will be persisted. Or you can also configure spaces to go to sleep mode automatically after some period of time. And then whenever you start using the cluster again, for example, if we do kubectl get namespace command. So basically with the first interaction with that space or with that virtual cluster, the space becomes active again, as you see. And this is a very convenient way of using the sleep mode to save lots of infrastructure cost.